So I hope this works. I know that our internet connection is not the best at the moment. Um, so I have no idea if I'm live now. Oh yes, I think I, I am. Well, um, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are right now. Um, welcome to another Bible study, Waves of Hope. Um, those of you who join us daily, you, you know that we are already, um, or for a few weeks, we are in the book of Genesis. And today we will go through Genesis um, chapter 28, the verses 11 to 22. My name is Eki Breitenmoser. I'm from Germany. And right now I'm not in Bremerhaven, where I'm normally a port chaplain, reaching out to you if you're a seafarer. But right now I'm in southern Germany at our missions base, our sending base uh, for yeah, refreshment, for encouragement and for fellowship for uh, almost three weeks. I took my youngest son with me, Joshua. He is 12, but he is now outside. It's a sunny day. It's very beautiful. It's very warm, which I really enjoy. Well, I hope you're doing fine right now, wherever you are. And if you are a seafarer, I have to tell you that uh, people around the world are praying for you. In these days and weeks and months, I think more than before, because they know all of, all of your struggles, you know, back home on the ship because of the coronavirus, which affected the world worldwide. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your work that you are doing. I mean, you are sacrificing your life. You know, for for us, for people who are, you know, living here, you bring in to our country all the goods, you know, things that we need, that we like. And I know that our life would look very different if you wouldn't do your job. So you're serving us in a certain way, even though it's your job, you get paid for. But I just want to tell you how much I appreciate what you are doing. And so this is for you, you know. Um, hearing from God's word. I think we all need that. I need that every day, even though I know that sometimes, you know, life is busy, but we have to hear from him because he knows what's best for us. And through God's word, we also learn not only how we should live life with each other, but we also learn, you know, more about him who created the world, who created us, who gave us, you know, eyes to see, taste buds to taste beautiful and wonderful food. Well, maraming salamat, um, shukra, uh, thank you, gracias, uh, for what you're doing as a seafarer, serving us. Well, um, that was my introduction so far. <laughs> uh, today we, you know, we go through Jacob's vision and vow, as I said before, Genesis 28. And if you have joined us before, uh, Mike took us yesterday uh, through um, the first 10 verses of this chapter. And we know that uh, Jacob left his father Isaac after the blessing. You know, I mean, Jacob deceived his, his brother and also his, his father uh, for the birthright. So that he became the recipient of the blessing, of the father's blessings that he couldn't take off him. And he charged Isaac, uh, sorry, um, Isaac charged his son Jacob to take a wife for himself. And he gave him some direction where to go. So Jacob did so and he went on a journey. And on that journey, he had a special encounter uh, with God, which even people or which we even hear about in the New Testament. But um, more to that later. You know, my, my personal note is here that I, I think it is always good before you take a major step like the marriage that we need some special encounter with God, even though, you know, um, Jacob didn't plan having this encounter. Uh, but if we have a decision like that to make, uh, we need, you know, hearing from God in the, you know, regarding that direction. And I can remember almost, how is it, 24 years ago, 
God gave me some revelation about my future wife. And, you know, in times of trouble, in times of goodness, it's good to be reminded of that, that you didn't base your decisions just on feelings. You know, is it your wife or your husband or your job or, you know, whatever, that you do not base those things on your feelings or on the money or on the country, but that you base those decisions um, on God, you know, what he has to tell you or what he has um, in stock for you, you know, what is his direction for you, for your plans, for your life. So, and here we hear about God's promise. And, well, I will read the text and then, then we have some time of prayer and then I will go through a few verses or, you know, a few things that I really highlighted, you know, from this text. Okay, let us read um, Genesis 28, verses 10 to 22. Now Jacob went from Bathsheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it as, at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to the land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Verse 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of this place Bethel. But the name of that city had been Luz previously. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. And for all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Heavenly Father, what a text we have here. And Lord, I pray for this coming 15, 20 minutes that you will help us to to dig into your scripture, to dig into your word. Help me to, to, yeah, to speak out the things that you have put on my heart as I study this passage. Lord, I pray that you will give us your guidance, that you will open up our hearts, that we will learn more about you. Thank you so much for all you will do and will accomplish, and that we can hold on to your promise that you have given us. In your precious name, amen. All right. You know, the first time when I read this passage, you know, for this Bible study, my eyes stopped at the word stone. I mean, just imagine that you, um, you, you, are, you are ready to take a sleep or to take a nap and you, you take a stone as your pillow. Um, that's kind of strange. So uh, I will come to that in a, in a, in a minute. And... Um, you know, when we look at it, the word stone we have, we find three times here in this passage. I cannot see you right now. I hope this will be recorded. But anyway, I will go ahead. You know, we have three times the word stone. And I was thinking, you know, I'm really curious how uh, to what kind of uh, teaching this will lead. You know, we have it here in verse 11, and verse 18, and verse 22. Uh, the, you know, the stone was first a, uh, a pillow 
which turns at the end of this passage into a pillar. Um, so we will, you know, see later uh, what all that means. Um, in verse 12, we hear or we see that there was a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of God were ascending and descending. Ascending and descending, we find this only two times in the entire Bible. And there's the deep connection of divine grace in the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, the Lord Yahweh, that God, uh, that uh, Jacob saw on the top of the ladder, is the same Lord who spoke to Nathaniel, which we can read in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 51. It is the vision of the future, we can say. You know, Jacob had this vision that Jesus repeats as he speaks to Nathaniel. And what does that mean? It means there will be a communication between heaven and earth today. And that Christ is the mediator between heaven and earth. There's no more. We can read this in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, that there's only one media mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. So he mediates between us and God. So God is revealing himself in the person of Jesus Christ. And the latter pictures that perfectly. And now I'm really concerned if this is really working. Let me just make a short break here. Um, because the internet connection here is very bad at the moment. No, I think it, I think it works. Okay. Sorry for that. I just keep on going. You know, we have a youth conference right now. And as you can imagine, you know, every, you know, boy or girl, young man, young woman are on their phones. And, you know, the line is very busy. <laughs> Sorry for that. But God is revealing himself uh, in the person of Jesus. And the letter pictures that perfectly, as I said before. The letter points to Christ himself. And, you know, Christ is the only way how we are able to draw near to God. There is no other way. And we, we know this also from the Bible in the, uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except by me. So there is no other way. Or, for example, also in the first letter of John, um, which you find in the back of the Bible, you know, 1 John chapter 2, verse 23, it says, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So Jesus Christ is the Father to God. Uh, is, uh, sorry, Jesus Christ is, um, <laughs> um, is, um, is the way to God. There is no other way. And when we have this ladder here as a picture from the ground, from the dusty ground, from the dirty ground up to heaven, it's, it's a picture of, of Christ. But not only that, he even promises more than that. He says in verse 15, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. So he speaks, still speaks to Jacob. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. You know, he promised that to Jacob. And he never promised that to any person before. I mean, in a certain way, he repeats his promise that he gave to Abraham and Isaac. But I will not leave you until I've done what I've spoken to you. That's not what he said to the other two. That's what he said to, to Jacob. And we have to keep in mind what did Jacob did before. I mean, he was running away from the consequences of his lies and deception you know he was the second born he was not the first born but he sold well he bought the birthright from from uh, esau 
and when he was ready to to get this you know this blessing which is only you know for the firstborn he was deceiving his father you know he said that you know he is he is um esau and not jacob so he deceived him his father and also his angry angry brother and then he also you know went to a foreign country foreign place which was totally unknown to him and he lays down in the dust of the earth and taking even a stone as a pillar i mean how how deep you have you have to fall in a certain way to do such a thing it cannot get worse in a certain way and exactly there that was the place where he met, met god in his dream to whom he never talked before as far as i know it was the first encounter um, of jacob and you know personally um, those personal crises is often the occasion for deep spiritual encounter with god almighty you know often you know when we are in a crisis in a difficult situation that's the place where he meets us often and we can find this also in the new testament where jesus says in the beatitudes in matthew 5 um, verses 3 you know blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven the poor in spirit has nothing to do with money or checks or um, stuff poor in spirit is someone who is who knows how needy he is that how much he is depending on god that is someone who is poor in spirit which is which is a good place because god says you know blessed are those people it you know it helps us also to see our need for him well it was an amazing promise that god gave to to jacob but did jacob deserve all that no he didn't you know why does god promise us eternal life for guilty sinners such as us out of the same reason we do not deserve anything from that it's com completely undeserved grace that god is giving us why he pardons us why he pardons all the things that we have done in 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 words in with our eyes with our looks in our minds in our thoughts in our actions why he pardons us we do not deserve that it's complete grace undeserved grace and mercy from god's side not from our side but more to that in uh, verse 19. you know what does that mean for us today for you and for me you know the god who made heaven and earth you know who who made the birds to sing we can talk to him we can talk and you we can communicate communicate to this amazing almighty god today you know no matter where you are if you are on a ship if you're back home if you are in the dark if you're at night or during the day in the, in the sun you know he knows us and we are able to know him through his word you know sometimes we think or if i would know such and such celebrity or mj you know michael jordan or a uh, messi you know soccer player ronaldo or federer is my personal hero you know i love playing tennis or maybe a, you know a hollywood star dwayne johnson the rock i don't care but how would we feel if we would have a connection to those guys you know in high places but imagine today we can even have connection to the most high to the god who created everything who created you who created me and we can communicate with him and he can communicate with us wow <clears throat> well i will go on so you know jake jacob awoke from his sleep and said you know surely this place um, is awesome it did not know it he was afraid also you know there was a certain reverence for god and today we do not hear much about reverence for god or fearing god we only hear about the loving god who takes care of their, us and love and compassion and mercy but here there was also reverence there was jacob was afraid and he had reverence for god and you know the bible says for example in proverbs 1 verse i think verse 8 the beginning of wisdom is the fear of god we have we need to have this fear this reference that god is almighty and 
it helps us also to to stay humble well it would be another topic to study but just you know one word on that um this is none other than the house of god and this is the gate of heaven that's how you know jacob received this special um thing and then in verse 18 then jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone you know the, his pillar that he put on his head set it uh, set it up as a as a pillar not as a pillow before it was a pillow now it's a pillar and put oil on on top of it so he consecrated it um and then he also changed the name um from Luz, which meant the original meaning is separation and he changed the name into bethel bethel means the house of god you know that's how he perceived it and when i think about stone i always think about what jesus said in matthew 21 verse 42 the stone that the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone Jesus is the chief cornerstone, and Jesus repeats that from, uh, he, he takes that from Psalm 118, verse 22. Also, when Jesus said in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 2, verse 19, Jesus said he will destroy the temple, the house of God, and in three days he will build it up again. Well, people were thinking, well, he must be crazy, but he meant himself, you know, he was the temple of God. So, there we have another connection how how um special this place is what we have here and what we have you know through this and again in verse 20 jacob made a vow saying if god will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat so he will, you know, take take care of him. And if I'm coming back to my father's house in peace, I mean, he left not in peace, the opposite he had. But when he returns in peace, the Lord will be my God. Um, yes, Jacob makes a vow here, but this vow, uh, this vow is a conditional promise to be faithful to God and but he based it on God's promise to him you know what God said to him before and then at the end in verse 22 this this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house and all of you that you give me I will surely give a tenth to you so um, here we have the word tenth I don't know if you're familiar with that but tithing is a claim that we normally hear from the uh, Mosaic law, where God says in Deuteronomy, in the fifth book of Moses, chapter 14, 22, where the Mosaic law requires, you know, a tenth of all our income. But here uh, there was no law, but Jacob decided for himself that, you know, of everything what he receives, he will get, give 10%, 10 uh, 10 you know, to God's house. Well, um, I will close here. I know there are a lot of other things here in this passage. Uh, you know, um, Genesis 28, 11 to 22, just 10 verses or 20, uh, 11 verses. Uh, but that's how far I, you know, I give you some, some words of encouragement, hopefully. And amazingly, also this connection between the Old and the New Testament. And that in Jesus Christ, we have this connection to God. You know, sometimes I meet seafarers, they think, oh, I cannot pray because I feel unclean or I cannot go to church because I feel unclean. Um, or I have to do, I have to bring certain offerings. No. In the person of Jesus Christ, we meet God. You know, he is our mediator. And he died on the cross for you and for me. And we have surrendered to him. And the thing is, if you deny Christ, you deny the Father, as I have read before. But if we receive Christ, if we believe in him, we receive God, we, we believe in God. Because Christ is the third, uh, second person of the Trinity, 
you know, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is one person, and uh, I really pray that these words have been encouraged, that have been encouragement to you, and well, may God bless you and keep you. And I just want to, you know, encourage you also for tomorrow's study. The, you know, it will be um, the next verses. You know, starting in uh, chapter 20, 29. So again, God bless you. Bye-bye.